HD tutorials um, we what did we do? Brought up um, our Ethernet card and off the boot CD, Linux from scratch, and we uh, set the default password to a password we know. So that's done. And we brought up our SSH server. Now, we're on our remote machine and we want to log into that uh, LFS machine. And this is how we do that. First, I'm the root user. You don't have to be, but I am. So I, I'm going to go clean out my SSH keys because I have uh, I have conflicts with that. So if you have conflicts, you might need to do the same thing. So I'm going to clean these out. Now we can SSH into our remote LFS machine. And that user is root. And we're going to say at 192.168.1.101. Uh, okay. So yes. Now we're going to type in the password that we put in for our password off the uh, boot CD on the remote machine. Let that go through. here. We are in our remote machine off of our live CD. Now if you're not going to SSH this is where you start. This is what you see uh, when you boot up on your remote machine. Now, you <coughs> Naturally you don't need a physical machine. You can use a virtual machine, virtual box or uh, what's the other one? Or the other one. <laughs> but I use mine on physical machines because it's better for uh, hardware and all that good stuff and a lot of times virtual machines I can't um, do what I want to do so given that little history on Linux from scratch uh, basically Linux, Linux from scratch is uh, you build your own OS from zero all right, you make a, say you make a folder you dump uh, 100 and some packages into it and you use the um, resources from a, um, a machine um, or an operating system to build your own operating system. So it's kind of like a quote parasite, if you want to call it that. It's like that. All right. And right now, um, we need to create a partition that we can uh, mount and put all our packages in to start building. So with that, we'll say fdisk, um, use fdisk. If you're not familiar with it, you need to get familiar with it for this. Okay. Um, you can see here we got a 20 gig partition, um, HDA1 and HDA2. These, well, these two are the partitions, 20 gig hard drive total. Okay, these have Linux partitions on them. Now you don't have to do this, especially if you're installing this alongside of something. I wouldn't recommend if you have you know, if this is your operating system, I wouldn't say delete it. But since there's nothing on my hard drive, and you can install Linux from scratch next to your existing operating system, you know, for instance, I'm using Ubuntu. Um, if I wanted to install LFS next to Ubuntu, I could do that, but I'm not. So I'm gonna wipe this out as a clean hard drive. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's uh, the best way for me. So I'm going to say fdisk dev hda brings up that p for print and we can see now we have uh, isolated our 20 gig hard drive the 30 is not here anymore so we're going to be working on the 30 gig or the 20 gig which is hda not hdb okay and I'm going to say delete one for partition one print take a look at it delete two print and Write makes everything stick. Okay? So without the write, nothing will stick. You have to do it all over again. Sync in disks and let it do its thing. Okay. Say clear. Type in fdisk again and list it out. Now we can see here that our 20 gig hard drive is got nothing. Okay? That's what we want. 
So now we're going to go back in and create two partitions on this nice new empty hard drive. And we'll say fdisk dev hda say print we've got nothing say n for new p for primary uh, partition number is one default is one so we hit enter and we want to say plus six gigs you don't have to go you don't have to go gigs you can go wherever you want but I'm using six gigs so it's all case sensitive so and push for print okay Again, um, we're say new primary two, and I'm gonna call this 512 megabytes, and we're gonna name this swap. Okay. So if I was to print it out again, see here that these are both 83. Okay. Well, I want this new 512 megabytes that I just created. I want this to be a swap partition. Swap partition is 82. So if you type in T. Um, it changes the uh, partition ID. I'm going to type in 2. I'll list out the codes for you so you can see. Whoa. So you can see all the codes. Let's do that one more time. Okay. These are all the codes. Okay. And you see here you got uh, Windows uh, NTFS partition is uh, number 7. Okay. Fat and all that stuff like that. Um, we're, we're not going to worry about that. We're you got old Minix up here at 80, Minix 81, and our partition, um, 83, we're going to put the, the operating system, yeah, that's the ID of 83, but I want to change the second partition to a swap, which is 82, so, I'm going to type in 82 down here on the bottom, and I'm going to push print, and you can see here, that changed, okay, so that's good to go. Everything looks good, and we're going to write it. Let that go back and do its thing. And after I do any alterations to the partition table or anything else with the hard drive, I always like to reboot my computer because uh, I've had problems before. So that's what we're going to do. We'll stop it here, and we're going to reboot the computer. You can do that from here by typing in reboot. And when you start back up what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to bring back up your ethernet card you're going to have to change the default password of the uh, the boot CD and you're going to have to bring back up your SSH server so basically you have to repeat tutorial 2 which isn't it's nothing alright but uh, in order for everything to stick I'd recommend that you reboot your machine so that's what I'm going to do now out of SSH and I don't have a button for my screen recorder so I gotta find out <laughs> where it's at and I gotta kill it 3152 okay I'll see you in the next one